Is it possible to fix the big stabilization problems in the Sony ZV-E10? Can it be done in post-production? I'm gonna use different pieces of software to see can we nail this and actually make video that's moving from the Sony ZV-E10 actually usable. So I'm gonna use Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna use the stabilization function in DaVinci Resolve. I'm also going to use LumaFusion on the iPad and then Catalyst Browse, which is what Sony recommends to stabilize the footage because that reads the gyro data. And then I've got a secret weapon that's been suggested by by one of you guys and we're going to find out will this secret weapon be the one to blow them all away or is it really time to get rid of my Sony ZV-E10. When it comes to digital stabilization, one thing that can possibly help you is a very fast shutter speed. I've learned this from GoPros and it's a go-to thing. So if you want that cinematic motion blur and trying to stabilize your footage in post, not gonna happen possibly. But I'm using a one over 500 shutter speed. Camera's been in shutter priority. We're gonna use the same clip throughout. We're gonna start on Premiere Pro with Warp Stabilizer. That's the footage. Active Steady Shot has been turned completely off on this, so the footage, as you can see, is pretty bad. Let's get Warp Stabilizer on here and see how this works relatively fast-ish. And at its standard setting, it's kind of very jello-y looking, and it's probably even more distracting than the actual unstabilized footage at all at all. Sure, you can drop it down the smoothness, but again, I wanna keep everything on the default settings here to see for everybody, can you just do a quick win? So that's Premiere Pro, as you can see the before and after footage here. It's really starting to annoy me. Okay, next up, DaVinci Resolve. I know everybody is switching to DaVinci Resolve, including myself. I haven't switched yet, but I am kind of debating it given some Premiere Pro issues, but anyway. DaVinci Resolve has three different types of stabilization. I'm just reducing the crop factor here, the cropping ratio, so the whole thing stays in shot and it doesn't cut off my head. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the perspective, then we're gonna try similarity, and then I think it's called translation. We're gonna try the three of these, see how they look. Now, right out of the gate here, DaVinci Resolve seems a lot faster to work than Premiere Pro, but let's not get into what's optimized and what's living on legacy code. So DaVinci Resolve perspective, it's okay. And if we look at the similarity, I feel similarity is probably the better one here. And then again, if you look at the transparency or the translation one, it's like, uh, again, are they better than the original? I think maybe Similarity is the one that I might go for here. Let me know in the comments which one you think is best so far. What we're gonna do next is a complete extreme. This workflow may not work for everybody, but if it gets a stable footage from the Sony ZV-E10 that we can actually use in our videos, then I don't see it's gonna be that much of a big deal of a workaround. This is LumaFusion that we've got on the iPad Pro. And what I'm gonna do here for this, we're just gonna go all in on the options that LumaFusion gives us for stabilization. And I'm gonna select the stabilization presets here. And then we've light, medium, strong, light and shutter, medium. I'm gonna go strong and shutter because let's see how good or how bad this whole thing actually might be. So I'm not sure the way it does this, but it's obviously tracking what it says is the dominant motion here. I'm presuming it's probably, I would think, focusing on me, or I don't know. But anyway, this, to be fair, is relatively fast as well. Faster than Premiere Pro, possibly. Then once we've got our video stabilizer active, you can see it's like, okay, I look a bit stable, but I look quite jello-y, more so than usual. And the background, it just looks so weird. And there's such a big, oh, sorry, LumaFusion, there's such an important point here that if the footage looks weird or funny or distracting or jarring, that's not something good for your audience, right? And chances are they're probably gonna go, ah, this is annoying. And if it's annoying, they're gonna click out. And if they click out, then ugh, there's no point. Now, I've got two more options left. One of them is what we're gonna look at next. And then we've got this secret weapon, which was recommended by one of you guys out there. And I can't wait to try this out. But first, let's get into Sony's Catalyst Bros.
Once we get the footage into Catalyst Bros, it's just a case of clicking stabilize and it goes off and it analyzes the clip. And this is probably one of the fastest things that Catalyst Bros does. So then we can kind of scroll over and we can see our kind of before and after. And to be fair, even on auto settings, this looks really, really good. Remember, there's no active steady shot has been on in the Sony ZV-E10 for this footage. And let's just pick a spot at random. Look at this. I mean, there's a couple of points where it jumps a little bit in the background or it just looks weird, but you probably get away with that. So for me so far, Catalyst Browse is probably the best option. It's easy to use and you just export your footage with the same settings and that's kind of it. However, there's a ginormous problem with Catalyst Browse and that's its export speed as you can see here. You don't even want to see this in real time. It is quite slow and you have to do it clip by clip by clip. So there's no batch stabilization, but there is batch rendering where it'll render out a whole bunch of clips that you've stabilized. However, if you want the privilege of that, you do have to pay Sony a yearly subscription for Catalyst Browse, and that allows you to batch render, which if it was faster, it might almost be worth paying for. But for me, while this so far looks to be the best, <sighs> okay, let's try the secret weapon that was suggested by one of you guys. Gyroflow is completely free, it's open source, and if you're an FPV pilot, you probably know all about Gyroflow. I'd never heard of it before, so let's get our footage in here, and to be honest, this is probably the most complicated of all of the software, but it's free, and if it works, we could have some epic Sony ZV-E10 footage to work with. Now, we gotta select a lens profile, which, Thankfully, the Sony ZV-E10 kit lens is in there. These are being suggested by users. I'm not sure of all the different stats and specs and options that we should do here, but I've done enough. I've looked at one or two videos online just to get this thing going. AutoSync seems to be the one that gets it all together. And essentially what this does is it stabilizes the footage based off of the gyro data the same way the Catalyst Browse does. And oh my God, that does not look good. That does not look good at all. Now, I gotta be honest here, I could well be screwing up the settings, but that does not, that doesn't even look as good as Catalyst Bros. I mean, like it's DaVinci Resolve good, almost. Oh, and DaVinci Resolve is free as well, the version that I've used. See, the thing here with this, right? Oh, man. The thing here with pieces of software like this is what it's ultimately used for is you'd load in the gyro data from another camera. So if you had a GoPro strapped onto your camera, then it would take the gyro data from the GoPro and then it would stabilize the camera footage based off the gyro data from the GoPro. So that's what the other option is there, that open kind of the motion data thing. Yeah. Uh, this camera is genuinely phenomenal for its size. The stabilization is so, so bad. If you're shooting 1080, 120, it's great. And this is all with the kit lens. So we've tried the faster shutter speed and all of this, but can't help but think, is this gonna have one more go? Is there something that we could do where, well, what would happen if we put a wider lens on this? Could this save? the Sony ZV-E10. While we make that video, check out this for all the best settings for video on the Sony ZV-E10.